it's good to be here on a cold night. It's warm in here. Thanks, Lord, for everybody to come out. Pray that everybody be safe. It does ice over or something. Sweet. Go to the Lord in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for the day, God, you've given us, God, this morning's message. And God, we thank you, Lord, for the season that we're in, God, to worship you, God. Every day of our life, Lord, not just on Christmas, but every day, worship the Lord Jesus, Spirit, and in truth. We thank you for your love. I love you, Lord, for saving my soul, Lord. We don't have to go to hell. God, we thank you, Lord, for that. We thank you, Lord, for our church, our people, our evangelists, our preachers that preach all over the world, trying to show the world to come to the Lord. But a lot of them won't do it. But that's our job, to try to speak to someone if we can. Anytime we, we can, is just give them a little word, a little light, a little help. And Jesus is the light. And we thank you. Lord, bless this offering for that building of our kingdom in Christ's name. Amen. I'm a home prepared.
And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. So good to be in the house of the Lord this evening. And thankful for a, a good morning service. And then over at the nursing home, we just had a fantastic time over there with the country store. And uh, it was wonderful. And thankful for the people that came out to help with that. It, it, was, a, it was a blessing. Had, had people just thanking me and thanking our people the whole time we were there as we wheeled a lot of them around and got their stuff, and they spent their paper money, and uh, uh, LB was over there, and he told me, he said, now, that fella, you're going to have to get more than a dollar for a big Bible, had a big leather Bible that we'd give him, and he said, you, he said, we got to give, this, we got to do this again, we can't give all of it away, so he got a, he got a Bible for a dollar, and he got another Bible for a dollar, but he paid about 20 for a magnifying glass. I said, it all leveled out, just like the Lord wanted it to. <laughs> but we did enjoy that. And, and, and if you see LB or send him a message, thank him and Mary for taking part in that, getting it together. It was a real, a real blessing. And so we're, we're so thankful uh, that that went well. And tonight, got a special treat for you. Uh, it's good to have Brother Dwight going to be preaching for us tonight. And as he comes, I want you to make him welcome. And love on him tonight, support him, amen him, and thank God we'll have a good time. God bless you. Praise God. I want you to know tonight, thanks to God, that I, <clears throat> I've been having a busy day all day. I had to go over to the Hayesville house this morning and preach to a group of wonderful, loving, gentle, and kind, appreciative, yes. knowing God, well, loved, saints of God this morning. Yes. I had a, a, one of the greatest times I ever had in my life over there this morning. You know, I, I don't consider myself a songster. But I will make a joyful noise. And we got together in that place this morning and started singing to the glory of God. And there was a young lady there that I haven't seen there before. I don't know if it's uh, the one that's some kin to you, uh, whatever, but she broke out in song this morning. And God, I'm telling you, God has really been blessing me today. I haven't had so much church in my life. I mean, I, I, I didn't want to go home uh, this evening before we went to, Hay, uh, to Clay County. I, I was in such a hurry, but uh, all day long, the devil has been playing with my mind on standing before you, bringing forth God's word tonight. But I want him to know tonight that this means war, especially, you know, with, my, with, my, with our young children, how the devil is, is. I just want to step on the devil's head just for a little while, for how the devil is deceiving our children through the Internet and through television and, and, and through, through uh, 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 certain friends. I, 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 I despise him, and he's a liar, and he's the father of them. And I want him to know that he has no authority over our youth. He has no authority over their mind. We are 
and will be the authority that God gives us to speak in and over them in the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, I, 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 I have a daughter that's, 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 that, that thinks that, uh, 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 that she's in love with a woman. And I stand before you today, you know, and, and proclaiming her to be delivered. I want you to know that that's not God, what God meant for us. Amen. That's not what God has, 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 has born, been born us for and reborn. I, I want you to know that when, when, when two men and, and two women are, are talking about marriage, come on, yeah. ain't nothing holy about that. I don't, how, I, don't, I don't know how a, a preacher can stand before him and say, we now pronounce you husband and wife. This, this is not what God has meant, and, and, and I'm telling you, uh, we got to get hold of our children. We got to take our children back. It is time for us to stand up as mothers. It is time for us to stand up as fathers. We got young men putting their hand on women. I want you to know that ain't what God meant for women to be. I know I've been young before, but I've grown up. It's time to put away childish things. It's time to grow up today. Amen? I want you to know that God has been good to me. God has brought me from a mighty long way, children. A lot, I, 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 think of my, I think of the young, young people all the time. I think of how people are, are grown men and women that, that we put our children in trust over, uh, uh, how they are putting their hands on them and, and telling our children if they say something that this is going to happen and that's going to happen. Children, don't be scared to speak to your parents. Don't be scared to tell your parents nothing. That's what they are there for. They're here. God has put us here to protect you, to take care of you, to let you know wrong from right. It may seem harsh, and it might seem that we're getting in your business, but God put us here just for that purpose, to get in your business. Until it comes a time that you can take care of your business on your own, that's what we're here for, to serve and protect you in the house, in the school, in the streets, anywhere you are. Honor thy mother and thy father, the Bible says, that your days will be numbered. Honor thy mother and thy father. Father God, I just come to you right now in the name of Jesus. Thanking you, Lord, for, for this time to stand before your people and proclaim your word to be true. Father God, I thank you for your mighty anointing going now from breast to breast, from ear to ear, Lord God, from heart to heart, Lord God, touching the men and, and the women of, of this church and, and for those that are listening over the internet, I pray that God's spirit will overshadow you and overtake you. Those that are not saved, that don't know God in the free parts of their sin, I pray that you realize what the real gift of Christmas is. I pray that you really realize why we have our very being. I thank God tonight for, for, for just the opportunity to, to stand here, no matter how nervous I might feel or, or no matter how much fear the devil tried to put before me, I do not fear tonight. I don't fear what the devil has said to me all day long. I don't fear this, this old boy because he has no authority. Father God, I just thank you tonight. I praise you, and I, I ask you right now in the name of Jesus to, to set me to, a side, to the side, Father God, just for a time, Father God, and use me as an instrument of your word. Lord, put inside of me a well of living water that I can speak life and not death, blessings and not curses. Father God, let me stand to be true, Lord God. Lord, I thank you, and I praise you, and I bless you, and I, I thank you for this church, and I thank you for them allowing me to stand in your, your sacred pulpit to preach your word, Father God. I thank you for this family that you allowed me to walk into and the love that I, I, I see in them, Father God, and I know that it's genuine. I thank you for that. Lord God, and I thank you that you've given me an eye, Lord God, not of color, Lord God, but of love and, and of peace and of sound mind, Lord God. I thank you for that. Let us grow, Lord God, from this day forward, Lord God, to tell thine men and women that you're still alive, that you're still on the throne, that you're still setting free and delivering in the name of Jesus. Father God, I give you glory and honor tonight. I give you praise. 
in the mighty precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I pray. I come to you tonight to bring a word from God. I, 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 a lot of times I get excited and, 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 and I lose my place in my notes and sometimes I'll say something twice. But if I do, just, 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 just don't pay it no attention. Next week, I, 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 I got a birthday coming up and I'll be uh, 58 years old. Young men, young women, I didn't think I would see 21. I didn't think I would see 16 because of the life I was living. But I come tonight to tell you that Jesus is the reason for the season. Jesus is the reason for the season. John 3, 16 and 18 tells us Jesus Christ makes at Christmas and in our life the Bible tells us in John 3, 16 and 17, for God so loved the world <laughs> that he gave his only begotten son. <laughs> Whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have eternal life. God's gift was his son, Jesus. I want y'all to hold on to your seats tonight because I'm going to take you on a, a journey. Okay. You see, if I was an attorney at law, I would tell you to close your eyes and I would give you the summation of the trip that God made to Calvary. I would stand here and I'll tell you that they charged him, a guiltless man. They charged him, and, and, and then they began to beat him, and, and they began to put a crown of thorns on his head, and they began to charge out Jesus, who was an innocent man, who was guilty of no sin, one that can, that can commit no sin, but they charged him anyway. I know today it is common during the Christmas holiday. You see, I'm not usually a... a, a, a armchair researcher, but I believe much of the holiday depressions come largely from a wrong focus. For many, the focus is placed on an overweight, bearded man who sits in the mall making promises to little children but never delivers on the promise. You see, man can make all the promises to you, he won't. But it may come a time in a situation that he can't keep his promise. A man may promise that he'll pick you up for work every morning. But for some unseen reason, he get up and got a flat tie. I want you to know, but there's one that made a promise to us all. And his name is Jesus. His promises cannot be broken. Can't no weather keep him from making his promise come true. I want you to know if you just believe and depend on the promises of Jesus, this world will be a much better place. We as the parents has to perpetuate such a fantasy, the hope of Christmas turns into materialism. The focus is further blurred by those who wish to be political, politically correct. Instead of Christmas vacation, many students are enjoying their winter break. Folk are celebrating at best a time off with family or other activities. At worst, colds and flus. Merry Christmas is turning into happy holiday. Unfortunately, the phrase happy holiday has no more meaning than how are you doing. I want you to know if, if you take a, a present and you take it to your child and you say, happy holiday, he's going to look at you and say, like you're crazy. But if you walk in and you say, Merry Christmas, and look at the brightness that comes on his face and over his very being, but we have come to make Christmas a materialistic occasion. We try to compete with Bobby 
Tom, Susie, and Jerry, they bought their child a car for Christmas. I'm going to buy my child a car for Christmas. Already struggling. Already in trouble. We go out and we, we max out our credit cards and, 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 and we spend money that we don't really have just to satisfy a kid that don't even appreciate the things that we're doing for them. I want you to know they might seem happy at the time. I have given my kids presents. I mean, no, how much that cost? What's the name of that? That ain't the point I remember as a child when I was growing up. We didn't get things out of Sears. We didn't get things out of Walmart. We got things from the world for come to things that people have gave to, to these people that somebody else's child may have a, a, a Christmas. We was appreciative of, of skates that had one wheel missing. We was appreciative of a bicycle that we had to put together. But today we give our kids a brand new bicycle and they just throw it to the side. They don't even have the audacity to use the kickstand. I want you to know this has come a materialistic occasion for our kids. And I'm not just putting it on our kids. It is the parents' fault. We give and we give and we give and we give until we can't give no more. And, and then during the year, we're depressed. We have to get an extra job just to pay off a credit card. We, we have to get an extra job just to pay the insurance on the car that we just bought this kid. And, and he's not listening to what we're telling him. They're going astray. They're doing this and they're doing that. Amen. Jesus. Is the reason for the season. There is no expectation attached to such a word as happy holiday. You can walk past your neighbor and holler happy holiday. They might. But if you walk past your neighbor and say, Merry Christmas, brother. God loves you and so do I. He's going to say the same to you. The biggest emotion most people feel during their happy holiday is not happy, but resentment and exhaustion and depression over the things that we have given our kids and the, and the money that we spent. Now we can't even pay our rent. We can't pay, put gas in our car, but our kids are sitting over here with a $900 phone and a skateboard, a hovercraft, and all this kind of stuff right here. I want you to know that we got to get back to the old time way. We got to let our kids know that it ain't all about what you get during Christmas. It's all about the one that God has given us. The most perfect gift of all, his son, Jesus the Christ. I don't know a man today that will say, here, take my son. Take my son that Dwight might live. I don't know no man today that say, hey, take my son that, that Ken can have the right to the tree of life. I don't know nobody that will do this for me, but I know a God that loved us so much, that loved us not because of who we are, but because of whose we are. I know a God, hallelujah, that loved me even in my mess. I know a God that looked inside of me and seen the best. When my mama seen the worst, God seen the best. When I got in trouble and the police locked me up, they could take away my freedom, but they couldn't take away my God. I want you to know that God, the most precious gift, has been already given to him, his son Jesus. I'm talking about the man that, that made a walk with, with a cross that, that, that's maybe too heavy for eight men to carry, but they put it on his back and made him drag it through the court. And we had the audacity to holler, crucify him. And when he walked by, we, we had the audacity to spit on him. And we're still doing it today. 
we still not remembering that Jesus is the reason that we have our very being. We're still not remembering that Jesus is the reason that we get up every morning. We start on our way. We seem to forget and materialize the life of Jesus Christ. I want you to know that he is the reason for the season. He's not just the reason for Christmas. He's the, word, he's the reason for Easter. He's the reason for summer, spring, winter, and fall. I want you to know that Jesus is the one that causes the snow to come. Jesus is the one that causes the flowers to bloom. Jesus is the one, and I want you to know I'm used to a church that will praise God in the good. I want you to know I'm used to a church that will praise him in the bad. I'm talking about the gift that God gives us every day of our lives. God has given you a gift of joy. Then you put it on the shelf. You taking your joy just because somebody looked at you when you got ready to praise Jesus. Your joy was getting ready to come out. But you took your joy and slid it down in your pocket. I want you to know I got a joy that no man gave me. I got a joy that the world didn't give me. And can't nobody take it away. I'm talking about a joy that'll make you run when ain't nothing chasing you. I'm talking about a joy that'll make you cry when everything's going all right. Jesus is the reason for the season. I, I'm telling you, we got to get back to the old time church. I remember walking by as a young man on Christmas. People wasn't passing out gifts. They wasn't thinking of material things. You can hear the drones praising God. You can hear the stomping on the floor. You can hear the praising of his name. But we have materialized. We have materialized. Thank God he have a change. <laughs> Thank God he still the same God from over 2,000 years ago. He still the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Jesus is the reason that we have the activity of our limbs. Jesus is the reason that we have the jobs that we wake up and go to. But we still spit on him. We still say, crucify him. We may not say it in words. We may not formally say it out of our mouth. But we say it in our deeds. The things that we do concerning our Jesus. We ask for people to get on this committee or to get on this committee. We have 75, 80, 100, 200 people in the church and only two people stand. I want you to know that God is not pleased. We got to get back into the old time way. But when we ask uh, for people to stand up for God, you ought to run. You ought to make your way through the crowds like you're getting ready to touch his garment. You ought to, you ought to move people out of the way. You ought, to get, you ought to get ready to do for Jesus what God has done for you. Give Jesus back some of the things that, whoa! See, Jesus don't only give us on Christmas. God didn't only gift us, okay? he gave us Jesus so that we'll be gifted throughout the year. Amen. See, God gives us. A while ago, I say, I wasn't a songstress. But I'll sing to the glory of God. I will lift my voice up. It may sound bad to you, but when I lift my voice up and I lift it up and pray, the angels in heaven begin to worship because he know I am praising him and worshiping him in truth and in honesty. Why? Because I loved him because he first loved me. I know that Jesus is the reason that I'm here today. If man could have his way, I'd be locked up on drugs, on the corner selling drugs. 
But God had a plan for this old boy. He sent Jesus. He gave me a gift. He gave you a gift that you might be gifted the rest of your life. God give us a gift of song and we won't even sing for it. We ask that if anyone would help us to sing in the choir, we're not asking you to get up and sing a solo. We're just asking you to join in and praise the mighty God. And I'm talking about me too. I'm not exempt. I fall short. I might be six foot one, but sometimes I, I, I fall short. I, 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 I claim to, I, I'm tired. I'm weak in my body. Then I think of his goodness and all he's done for me. My soul cried out, uh, hallelujah, I thank God. I thank God for saving me. I was headed to a, to a pit, but, but God seemed fit to, 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 to in, impregnate or, or to or plant a seed inside a woman. He didn't even have to touch her. All he did was spoke it, and it came to pass. You see, I, 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 I preached this this morning, but I preached it in a totally different way because, because God had something for them and God got something for us. God didn't put us here. He didn't put Jesus there to do, what he, to, to, to do for us the things that we can do for ourselves. You see, we have a choice, what I'm talking about. I have a choice whether to get in my car and come up here and serve God. Knowing what he did for me, not only a few years ago, but, but just this morning, knowing that he seemed fit to let me get up out of my bed, to look in on my babies, to look at my wife and look at the things that he, his son has, has given me. Jesus, is the, if, if, if you don't get a, a necktie or, or your family and friends don't give you what you want for Christmas, just remember that Jesus, God has given you the ultimate gift. God has given you something that man can't take away. God has given you something that won't dust up. God has given you something that won't cramp up. He'll answer you in the, mor in the morning, evening, noon, and night. I'm talking about Jesus. The one with a heaven, heavenly father and an earthly mother. I'm talking about one that was born pure. One that can't even lie. And we yet to, to embrace that God has given us something to cherish. To, to tell our children about around the Christmas tree. To tell our children that it's not about a telephone. It's not about a big screen TV. It's not about uh, money. It's about Jesus. I'm talking about the one who gives you strength every day. You ought to take him with you wherever you go. I want you to know today i grown into a man that that knows that Jesus died for my sin. <laughs> See, they thought they were going to take that gift from us, not knowing that they were just unwrapping it. <laughs> They were just unwrapping the gift. I, I don't care what they thought they were doing by, by, by stretching out Jesus wide and putting nails in his hand. They were just unwrapping the gift. They were just opening up the box. <laughs> Huh, that you and I might have the right to love, to be at peace, to have warmth, to have everything that we need for life and godliness. Jesus is the reason for the season. God knew just what we needed. He knew if he hadn't have done what he'd done we will still be in a time of Sodom and Gomorrah. And it appears to me today that, 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 that people have forgotten about our Jesus. People have forgotten to respect our God. 
They are doing just what they want to do. They're, they're opening doors that God has closed and, and closing doors that God has opened. They're bringing to, to, to focus that, uh, uh, what men and women are, are, are made of. We are born in sin. We are born sinners. We are the... I want you to know. <laughs> God has given us the, the gift of the land on the van. See, he gifts us every day. But yet and still, we'll get on the telephone, call somebody else. How long have some of us been in church, been taught that God said he'll never leave you nor forsake you? If when they decided to go to the other side, and when the wind started blowing and the uh, uh, waves started taunting the ship, Jesus was down sleeping and they got nervous and scared. How long have they been with him? Haven't they learned anything that all they had to do is say, peace, be still? Don't you know that all you got to do is lay your hand on your child and, and, tell, your, and tell that devil to take his hands away from your child? Don't you know that all you got to do is walk through your house and tell that devil where to get off? Yeah, See, the devil ain't going to pay no bills. He, he ain't going to pay the light. He ain't going to pay the water bill at my house. He can't dwell there. Amen. I'm just there by chance. It belongs to God. Yeah. I'm just there for a time. But I know that there's a guilt waiting on me in heaven. <laughs> he went and built me a mansion. He went and built you a mansion. He got a room for me and he got a room for you. You ought to be willing to get there. I want to get there. I want to dance with my Jesus. I want to smoke. If I could just walk in his shadow. You see, we got a lot of preachers today that, 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 that have forgotten themselves what the reason for the season is. They, 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 they want their big jets and, uh, and, and they, they want their diamond rings and their, their Maseratis and, 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 and stuff like that, but they fail to tell the dying world that, that Jesus is real. He is the reason for the season. Woo, it's all right to have those things. But when it get, begin to take the place of Jesus, it's a materialistic Christmas. I looked at, at, at a TV channel and they're and they talking about the, the preachers of wherever. And all they talk about is money and cars and women. That ain't what God's word stands for. I can stand here and tell you that if you give a thousand dollars, if you bring a thousand dollars up here and lay it right there for me, tomorrow you're gonna get a check for a hundred million. That's a lie. Somebody sent me a text the other day, and they said that you're gonna get two hundred and forty thousand dollars if you pass this on to fifty more people. I looked at this thing. I was over there texting. My wife said, what you texting? I said, this person that I knew from my past, my uncle's ex-wife, she texted me this, and I texted her back, and I said, I'm finna put the devil to shame. I said, I am blessed because God gave his son Jesus to die for me. And in his word, he said, if I seek him first, all other things will be added to me. I don't need a change letter to be blessed. So don't send me no more of this mess because I am blessed. I have God on my side. Woo! I'm Holy Ghost filled, five baptized, and I got Jesus on my side. Huh? Woo! I'm telling you, man, we got to get back to the old time way. I want you to know that God's gift was his son, Jesus Christ. The Bible records this event of how God's son was given to us. Hallelujah. I want you to know in Matthew. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. I get there. Just hold on. Have a little patience on me. In Matthew chapter 1, beginning at verse 8. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to take her a public example. <laughs> when God came into my life. He told me, if you be ashamed of me before my people, I'll be ashamed of you and my, uh, my Father in heaven. I don't want God being ashamed of me. He have done too much for me. I'm not going to read this whole thing, but I just want you to know that this is a story that should be in every household. Not only at Christmas time, See, we, we, we don't even sit down and tell our children a story like we used to. We give them a phone, we give them a tablet and tell them, Amen. give them to the world, just, just push them aside. Sure. Give them that material, this material stuff that the world is used, that the devil is using. These devices that the devil is designing to, to kill our children, to, to destroy their minds and to use them to do the things. Not only our children, but men and women too. Men are looking at pornographic when they got a wife at home. The Bible tells me a man that finds a wife finds it a good thing. We ought to cherish our wives. We ought to love our wives. See, I've been there, done that. But God seemed fit not to give me a wife. See, a man will say, will you pray for me a wife? Church, I want you to know a wife is somebody already married. No, I can't pray for him to give you a wife, but I can pray for him to give you your soulmate. See, God will give you somebody that will work with you. See, he's still gifting us. He's still gifting us. He's still gifting us. Man, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, I, 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 I've had a, I'm, I'm, I'm about done, but I, I just want to share a little bit of something with you about my life. And the reason that I know and remember that Jesus is the reason for the season. God had entrusted me. My mama had gotten very ill. I was nine years old. She entrusted me to this preacher to, to take care of me while she was in Black Mountain getting, getting, getting doctored on and, and patched up and repaired so that she could come home and resume her motherly duties. My dad was nowhere to be found. We stayed in a, in a duplex and we had a wood stove and, 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 and uh, my aunt stayed on the other side and she was looking after us, uh, supposed to be looking after us. She took it and tore a hole in the wall. That's where she fed us at. She took our coal. I, I at nine years old, had to get in scrambled wood to keep my two sisters warm. She beat us for no reason. She tormented us. Then I, I was entrusted to this man that was supposed to take care of me, a man of God, a man of the cloth, one that say that he eschewed uh, 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 evil and, and, and loved righteousness. But he had the audacity to put his hands on me. But I'm standing to tell you today, that didn't make me think that I was not a man. That, that made me strong. That made me want to be more man than man could ever be. I wanted to have kids so I could protect my children. I could be with them. Jesus is the reason for my being here today. I was knocked down, stomped, kicked. A tube of toothpaste, squares in hands and just rubbed in my face. But I was still a man. I was tough. But I was weak. I didn't turn my back on the God that I love just because somebody else misused him and misrepresented him. See, my mama taught me to love. She taught me to, to, to trust. 
they moved me from this person. And my mom came home, and, 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 and I'm telling you, she became the man and the woman. She stood her ground. She stood up. She loved God. She loved God to the day he called her home on Christmas morning eight years ago. I want you to know that Jesus is the reason for the season. Children, trust in your parents. Talk to your parents. Let them know. Parents, tell your children that God is the reason that they have their being. Teach them how to pray. Teach them how to come to church. Teach them how to walk upright. Teach your sons how to be man's daddy. Teach your daughters how to be uh, women's mothers. Take back the gadgets. It's all right to give it to them every now and then. Take back the gadgets sometime at home. Have family meetings. Meet at the table. Eat dinner together. Go out together. Just let your children know it's not all about a phone. It's not all about tablet. It's all about God, the one that loves us, the one that gave Jesus to us, the ultimate gift. Our glory in his works. And I beg for him to use me. I, 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 I didn't propose to say what I said, but before I came, I, I asked God that when I opened my mouth, you utter the words. You see, a lot of times uh, uh, I can get in self. A lot of times I can step away from my notes and, and I can begin to do it myself. But I know when God is, is all over me and in me and I know that God whoa, is in this place and I know that Jesus is the reason for the season. I know that he, he, he gives me the ability to walk. He gives me the ability to talk. He gives me the ability to breathe. He gives me the ability to see the little things that we don't thank him for. We take for granted. Those are gifts from God. Don't take it for granted, children. Don't take it for granted, mothers. Don't take it for granted. Father, children are the reason that you are here to protect and to serve. You got to put on your Holy Ghost badge. You got to put on your Holy Ghost gun holster. And you got to protect your children from that which has come to kill, steal, and destroy. And I'm talking about Satan. God has given us a gift to pull down strongholds. He's given us a gift to speak to mountains and they'll be moved. He's given us the gift to preach in our own home, to teach in our own home. I know in the church God has given us the pastor and the deacon and the, the ministers and all that, but it starts at home. It starts in the house. People might think it's harsh the way pastor uh, uh, tell his children that they're going to sing and they're going to go and do this and do that. But if you bring up a child in the way that they should go, they'll never. They may go, they may fall, but they have something to come back to. Yeah. See, that's a father's love and I admire that in him. That's a father's love and I, and I, and I, and I, and I dream of that every day. That, that if, I, if I just had to do all over again. That my children will be walking upright. They will be walking in the gift. That's the gift of God, Jesus. They will be walking. But I failed my kids. I failed my children. And, and I stand before God and, and I pray that he give me the wisdom and the strength and the season to walk in my children's life. Men, we got to grow up and be men. And I'm telling you. I, I, might, I might be the only one that ever done that. I might be the only one that ever been on drugs and, and pushed my kids away. I, I might have been the only one that been on alcohol and told my kids that I don't want to be bothered today. Maybe it's just me. See, we got to tell the truth. We got to testify, testify before the devil. Don't worry about being justified in what you're doing because the blood has already justified you to him. You don't have to speak to him. You don't even have to talk to him. The blood of Jesus Christ has justified us. He have no authority in your life. He have no, Jesus is the reason for the season. 
If I leave you with nothing else, I want you to know that God loves us beyond our faults. God loves us in our mess. He, he, he loves us. Somebody told me one time that, that God doesn't go everywhere. But the Bible tells me that I never, he'll never leave me nor forsake me. If he hadn't have been in some of the liquor houses I was in, when I was faced with a gun and the trigger was pulled and it didn't go off, God had to be there. When I was in a car wreck, wrapped a car around a telephone pole, got out and walked away without a scratch, God had to be there. Don't tell me Jesus won't go with me. Don't tell me Jesus won't walk with me. Jesus is the reason for the season. I'm going to tell you this little story. I'm done. I, I heard it in a church service, and it really touched my heart. It's about an old preacher. He had a, a church up on the mountain, and there were no roads to get to the church, so they had to walk to get there. And the two, the, this old preacher was the last one every night to leave when they had church. But there was an old deacon in the church that didn't like the preacher because the preacher told the truth. The preacher preached God. He closed it all his eyes and, and he dotted all his T's and he did just what God had called him to do. He told God and the preacher, the deacon didn't like him. So the deacon decided to devise a way to get rid of the preacher. So he called a meeting and wouldn't nobody agree with him. So he had to devise something else. So he got on a plane and he went all the way to New York and hired a hitman to take care of this preacher. He said at a certain time of night, he'll, he'll have to walk through this path, this dark path by himself. He, he lived about a mile down this path and and if you're just out there in the woods, and you can get him when he's walking home. It was Wednesday night, and the church was on fire. I mean, God was all over that building. He was all over the preacher. The preacher was running around the church. He was jumping chairs, and he was preaching, and he was praying, and he was praising and singing. After it all was said and done. And the preacher gave his closing remarks. Everybody left and, and went home. And the old preacher was left to cut off all the lights and he began to lock all the doors and on his way out he just stopped and he turned around and he went back to the altar and he got down and he said, Father, in the precious name of Jesus, I need you to walk with me tonight. I need you to go with me, Father, and, and lead me through these woods and, and to take care of me and and, and, and watch over me as I, as I go home tonight, Father. I thank you for a good service, and I thank you for people being saved today, and I, and I appreciate all the things that you've done, but I need you. For some reason, Lord, I, I feel the urgency to call on your name and, 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 and to come and to walk with me and to be with me. I just feel the need tonight. He got up, uh, and he come to the door, and he closed it, and he locked it, and he wrapped himself up in his coat, and he started through the path. And that old deacon and that old hit man was laying in wait. <laughs> and off in the distance, the deacon said, there he is. There he is. Shoot him. That old hit man raised up with his rifle, scoped that old preacher out, and got back down. He said, what you doing? That's him. He's by himself. Get him. Shoot him, man. You're going to miss your chance. The old guy got up with that shotgun again. And he beat it in on that old preacher. And he, he got down. He said, man, what, what are you doing? This, you, this is your last chance. Go ahead, man. Get him. The old guy got up on him. He, he beat it and he cocked that old rifle back. And he just dropped it down. And he looked at that old deacon and said, man, you lied to me. You said he was going to be by himself. It's two of them. <laughs> Tell me God won't do just what he said he'll do. Anything you ask him, 
He'll do it. But all his eyes, his bowed and eyes closed. As the brothers come and get a song, I want you to know tonight, for everyone that's saved and know God and free pardon of your sin and know that if you died tonight that you would go to heaven, would you raise your hand? How many of you know that, thank you, how many of you know that if you died tonight, you don't know where you would go? You don't know whether you would end up. Will you raise your hand? How many of you uh, desire prayer and have somebody in your family uh, that, uh, that you know that needs prayer, somebody that's still lost, somebody that's still blinded, somebody that don't know that they, if they ask Jesus to walk with them, that he'll walk with them. How many of you know that Jesus is the reason for the season? You see, God is in his holy temple. Everything that we need, everything that we desire, God is here to give it to us. See, I know that we have these phones that we can call mom and daddy and brother, sister, and friends, but there's a line that you need to get connected to, and Southern Bell don't own this one. Straight talk has nothing to do with it. But if you just call on the name of Jesus, in the midst of all your troubles and your trials and tribulations, God will come and he will, he will bless you and he, he will hold you and he, he will love on you and, and, and he will just caress you in, 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 in all that, that, that you're going through. You see, I need him tonight. I need him every day of my life. Every time my feet hit the floor and I begin to pray and I know that Jesus is with me. I, I don't just realize that he's the reason for the season. I know that he's the reason for every day that I, I walk this earth and I breathe and, and I thank him for that. Now, Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. You know the need of every man, woman, boy, and girl that sits under the sound of my voice. Father, you know every hair on their head, every teeth in their mouth, Father God, every bone in their body. You know every organ that resides inside of the flesh that you carve from mud, Father. Father God, you are a battle axe in the time of trouble. Lord, we know that you are the Alpha of our life. You are the Omega. You're the beginning and the end. And if we could just trust in the gift, the precious gift of your son Jesus. You see, at the name of Jesus, sickness began to turn into healing. At the name of Jesus, Poverty becomes wealth. At the name of Jesus, sons become men and girls become, daughters become women. At that name Jesus, all hell take notice. At the name of Jesus, every knee is going to bow and every tongue's going to confess that he is the Lord of Lord and the King of King, that he is alive and well, that he's the ruler of heaven and earth and things beneath. At the name of Jesus, the church will be filled up. Politicians will begin to act the way they're supposed to. At the name of Jesus, 
people will begin to love right at the name of Jesus. As Martin Luther King said that little boys and, and little girls of every color, every nationality will hold hands and, and play the gathering fields without fear of being taught hate. At the name of Jesus, sour will become sweet. At the name of Jesus, every flower will turn into a rose. At the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God, we love you tonight. We need you, Lord. Everything that we are and everything that we think we are, Lord God, we need you, Lord. Every time that we think we have it in control, we lose it. And your dad will pick us up. Thank you for your son Jesus. Thank you for the gift that you've given us. The gift that will never fail. The gift that will never return unto his void. The, the gift that can never lie. The gift that has never and, and, and will never be able to commit a sin. I'm talking about the gift, the sweet and perfect Lamb of God, we thank you tonight. We honor and praise you tonight. Bless those, Father God, who, who, who's enduring the fires and who, who, who is enduring the harsh weather and, and, and who have lost loved ones and who, who is enduring hardship in their home and in their family. We ask, Lord God, that they remember that you are bigger than anything. You said in your word that, 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 that you, you will not put no more orders than we can bear. <laughs> but Father, you give us the strength to bear all that come our way. I thank you, Lord God, that you, you brought us out tonight to lift up your name, and I, I thank you for the privilege of just being used as an instrument of, of your work and an instrument. But Lord, I need to get a little closer. I need to, to, to get a, more, a little more learning. I, I, I need for you to teach me. Teach me, Lord. Grow me, Lord, that I might uh, do your work and to do it diligently and love doing it. Teach me. Teach me, Lord God. Let me walk in the shadow of those, Lord God, that, that's going on before me, Lord God. Let me walk in the shadow of, of those, Lord God, that, 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 that desire your word and, and all that they do. Thank you for leading me. Thank you for guiding us. Thank you, Lord. And thank you most of all for giving us that sweet and perfect, gentle, caring, understanding gift, Jesus. And all the church said, Amen. I can take a heart that's broken, make it over again. But I know a man who can. I can take a soul that's sin sick and wash it white as the snow. Oh, but I know. The Redeemer of all men, but I call him Jesus, for he's my dearest friend. If you think no one can help you and your life is out of hand, well, I 
Can you give the Lord a hand clap of praise tonight? He's worthy. Amen. Didn't you enjoy Brother Dwight this evening? Jesus is the reason for the season. I kept thinking, for every season of life that you're in, he's there for you. No matter what you're going through, suffering, sorrow, depression, anxiety, joy, happiness, whatever it may be, he's there for you and he loves you. Thank you for being here tonight. It's been such a blessing. Good to see Sister Kay Golden back there, back tonight. Her and her precious husband, Dennis, back on the camera. Good to see them back. And also good to have our visitors tonight. He's a coach down at Martins Creek now. He's the AD down there too, right? At the middle school. And his wife, Dallas, she works for Sister Leslie. And so not wife yet. Engaged. Fiance. But it's good to have them. Give them a round of applause. Make sure you... They feel your love uh, tonight. God bless you, Brother Lucas. Braden, you got anything? Not a chance, son. 
We love all of you. Thank you for being here. Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Hope you'll be back and be back praying. And uh, we do have some boys that will be playing this weekend. And so we pray for protection over them and their, their travel uh, as they go out to Durham, Duke University, to play for a state title. So we're proud of them, even though they don't go to Hayesville right here and they don't go to Hiawassee or Blairsville or, or the other schools that's represented. But we are thankful that they have, have found favor and that they've worked hard. And we pray that the Lord will help them and, and, and as they go to, to defeat a team. That's the way we're looking at it. They're going to go defeat them. And so let's pray for them that God will, will help them. And uh, God loves a winner. Do you know that? He does. I'm telling you. I'm a winner through Jesus Christ. And so let's just pray that, that God will be with all of our kids, that they'll be winners in Jesus Christ above all. Yeah, whether it's a, it, it, Being a Christian trumps everything in the classroom, on the court, on the field. I'm telling you if, you, if you, if you can give your life to Jesus and live for him, that's better than anything, anything. You could be a multi-billionaire and not have Jesus and be a loser. I'm glad I'm a winner tonight. Amen. Are you a winner tonight too? Yeah, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's get our hands up in the air, Brother Dwight, you and your wife. Go back and stand back there. Let them shake your hand. Let them love on you a little bit. We get our hands up there. We exercise. We say praise the Lord three times. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. May God bless you. Be safe and Merry Christmas.